What is your best I definitely did not deserve that grade story from school. Did not happen to me, but my grammatically challenged roommate at the time. We were instructed to write a how to paper for sophomore English class. We had to pick our topics during class and tell the teacher. Someone sitting close to us came up with the topic of how to write in a paper. So naturally, my friend goes with how to write an F paper. His intentions were to write it as best as he could and receive an A. He wrote it so poorly and with multiple spelling and grammatical errors that the teacher loved the satirical vibe he demonstrated in his paper and promptly gave him an A. That's actually a freaking great idea. In first year university, I wrote a paper in a sociology class where I mixed up the word mores, a type of social norm, and Murray a type of eel, and as such wrote about the impact of eels on law. For some reason, the Tay thought my eel law paper wasn't too horrible and gave me a B. She told the entire class someone wrote about social eels and that we needed to be more careful with our spelling, though. You now have me thinking of eel customs politics, and warfare between eel tribes and eel settlers. It's glorious. I had a college professor where I just didn't turn in my final and he gave me an A for the class anyways. Not sure why. I gave him some duck jerky earlier in the year so maybe he really liked it. That dude was 100% sure he lost your exam. In my college dynamics course we had a group project that we assigned different sections to do within our group. It was an incredibly difficult project so we couldn't just completely split off and do it on our own, but there were easier sections that could be done by one person. Anyways, in a group of three, one of our guys just never showed up to any of our meetings. We're not dongs and we get that we're busy and all that, so we just give him the easier stuff to do when he can get around to it. So my friend and I pull all nighters until we finally completed a few days before it was due. We send what we have to the third guy and he assures us that he'll get the rest done. We check up on him the day before asking if he wants help and he says that he's got it and he'll bring the completed project into class. Of course he walks in and says sorry guys, I never got around to it. We were basically missing the easiest one stroke three of our project because he couldn't tell us he needed help. I explained the situation to the teacher but he had no sympathy. He said in the real world you live and die by the people by your side and graded us for what we completed so surprise we failed. I didn't talk to that kid for the rest of the semester even though he sat right next to me. <laughs> Left one high school shortly after semester break. All teachers gave me an A because they didn't have anything to go on. Went to another state and they were so far into the semester all teachers decided they couldn't hold me responsible for what they already taught so they all gave me whatever grade I came in with. Only time in my life I got all as. Turned in the same essay twice. Got two different grades. Did the same. With a sculpture. He went on and on about the clear improvements in craftsmanship since last week. Smile and nod. In year 9 US grade 8 history, we were given a small assignment as homework over the weekend. I can't remember what the assignment was on, probably the Tudors or something, but it had to be around 500 words, and summarize what we'd been doing for the past few weeks. Nothing too hard. I completed the homework to what I considered a reasonable standard and handed it in. However, when I received the grade, I was awarded a D, with the teacher's primary criticism being that I hadn't written enough material. I was confused by this, since I'd written around 500 words like he'd asked. He told me to go away and redo it better. After getting home, I had some time to compare my work with my friends. I'd written the essay in a size 11 font times New Roman, and I had neglected to include any images. This is pretty standard for higher grade academic work but most of my peers had used size 14. Some even used comic song. So what did I do? I scaled up the text, increased the spacing, and slapped a couple of generic pictures of Henry VIII's face on there, and handed it in the next morning. Lo and behold, after he graded it, I got an A, and a special mention for my hard work. I have never been so thrilled with myself, and so disappointed in a teacher in my life. It just goes to show how another person's laziness can screw you over. 9th grade spelling and vocab test. The word was ascend which I defined as to gain in altitude. I was marked wrong. The teacher was looking for to go up, like on a ladder. This was 16 years ago and I remember this conversation verbatim. 
I lost a mark for saying that microscope lenses should only be cleaned with delicate task wipes. Kim Wipes brand delicate task wipes was the answer she wanted. I still feel a little bitter every time I look at a box of them. My senior year of high school I was taking Spanish 12, or the senior level course. I had been taking yearly Spanish courses since 7th grade at this point, so you would think I would be bueno by now. But, no. No I was not bueno. For our final presentation we had to discuss any topic we wanted for a full 15 minutes. Obviously all in Spanish. I knew I would struggle but I tried all year to actually improve. I did not. Anyway, I did my presentation on the Oregon Trail computer game. Remember that crap? It was awesome. I played through and grabbed screenshots of different stages. I named my players after my friends in the class. I went the full move, you could say. One floor. I didn't have the vocabulary for a 15 minute speech on my game. So I tried to cheat. Each slide was well done but what I said was the exact same with small changes. Me familiar yes. Then a verb. I even wrote note cards and hid them in my crotch while I sat and pretended they were hidden. I'd read off them because remembering like 8 verbs was beyond me. Mucho trabajo. I ended up with a grade that would allow me to pass and leave language courses the rest of the year. My teacher knew I was an idiot and gave me a slide. I'm convinced. So I thought I could do the same next semester and I signed up for Spanish 13. Easy college credit I thought. I walked in, same teacher. She took one look at me and wrote me a pass to my counselor. You aren't taking this, butterlack. Go find a business course or something. So I did. Now I have a marketing degree I don't use. Life is crazy, man. I had a bit of a weird teacher in geography way back when I was in the 9th grade. He was always correcting our assignments way too long after we handed them in. One time we had two assignments that should hand it in over the course of two weeks. I only did one of them as I didn't really feel like doing the other one for some reason. When we got back the assignments back like a month later or something, he didn't actually give back the assignments. He just told us our grades from a piece of paper he was reading from. When he got to my desk he gave me a B for the first one and an A for the one I didn't hand in. I don't think I deserved that. English 101 I forgot that an essay was due that following afternoon but had to work and study for a more important chemistry course. Downloaded the smallest JPEG file I could find, converted it into a Dart PDF and submitted the essay in hopes the professor would ask to send it again and it would give me a buffer time of 24-48 hours. I checked the grade module and got full points. No questions asked. Man, I used to do that rename a JPEG to a Dart doc trick to buy time but it never occurred to me to pick small images. I wonder if my professors ever noticed I was handing in 500 kilobytes word documents that were supposed to be 3000 word essays. The qualifications to access university in Scotland are what are known as hires. I took higher English, but I'm kinda crap at English, but good enough to pass the exam. When our prelim, a sort of test exam, rolled around in February, I failed it by like 2% and the teacher decided that I wasn't good enough to sit the higher exam. She'd keep me in the class, but when the exams rolled around, I'd sit the lower tier intermediate 2 exam, which would give me a lower tier qualification, which is useless for just about anything. I sat this exam, and ended up getting an A, a useless freaking A which would be no help in getting me into university, effectively wasting my whole year in that class. This was 13 years ago now, and I'm still annoyed. Mad just reading that. <laughs> Took biology and economics my freshman year of college, and made the mistake of doing both classes in the morning, I worked swing graveyard shift. The biology class was graded solely on three exams. The dates for them were in the syllabus, along with a summary of chapters covered in each. I only showed up on the first day and three exam days, crammed the night before each time and did really well on the tests. Got an A. Economics was harder. Participation and attendance counted toward the grade, and a test date was moved so I missed taking it. Fortunately I had a buddy in the class who signed my name on the attendance sheet that day, and was therefore able to convince my professor that he must have lost my exam. He let me retake it and I eked out a B. Your friend is a hero. My film studies prof always stressed there are no wrong interpretations of a film, only different ones. 
She then proceeded to give me a 60% on an essay, because, and I quote your interpretation of the wrestler is simply incorrect. That's not the message the movie was trying to send. Sophomore year of college I was taking a class that, about 2 stroke 3 RDS of the way through the year, I totally checked out of, rarely went to class, hardly ever paid attention when I did, just stopped caring, leading up to the final. I of course realized I knew none of the material, the final wasn't cumulative. I did the math and realized I needed a 50% to pass the class with a C. I show up the day of the exam and realize, I got the day wrong. My exam was the previous day. I email my professor in a panic and beg her for a chance to retake it, or do some kind of extra credit, anything to get me a passing grade. No response. I go home for winter break assuming I'm going to have to retake this class. Haven't told my parents out of shame. Then, two weeks later, my teacher finally replies. Her email went something like this. I'm so incredibly sorry you not me fault. I left for vacation immediately after the exam and just now got back. It's obviously way too late for you to take the exam or do any kind of extra credit. The best I can do is take your current class average, an 89, and put that in for your exam grade. Would that be okay? So I get a B plus instead of the C I was hoping for? Yes. Yes that would be just fine. That is the best luck I had ever heard of. This is from college, and it happened very recently. I take programming classes and our mid-exam was to complete pre-written codes. The purpose of the code was to assign characteristics to a rocket. When the required characteristics are filled, the rocket will launch, and the completion status must be 100% for this to happen. If the completion status goes below 90%, the rocket won't launch. You get the idea. I was never good at programming. I understood the logic but writing the codes down is like writing an alien language. The exam was 2 hours, and in the span of 2 hours my completion status was a mere 20%. My friends got 65%, 80%, even one was smart enough to change the pre-written codes and got 100%. I accepted the fact that I might fail this class and submitted my exam. I don't exactly know how the gods work up there, but I got a 95 on my mid-exam. Yes, 95. What the frick? I emailed the lecturer asking about how I got such score, and he said though I didn't get 100%, I implemented polymorphism into the codes, and he thought it was impressive. To this day I still don't know what the frick polymorphism is, and how in the world I could have implemented that crap on my program. This was 10 years ago in the Midwestern US. I took biology as a freshman in high school. There was this big bug collecting project that counted for like 40% of our first semester grade. Basically, we had to catch a bunch of bugs, kill them, pin them, and correctly label them with their scientific name. To get full credit, you had to catch a minimum of 30 unique bug species. The one thing I learned from that project that I still remember, I am terrible at catching bugs. If you count the cricket I bought at the pet store, I managed 18 and received a D plus on the project. So, despite earning A's on all of the tests and homework that semester, I earned a B in the class. You were punished for your unwillingness to kill for your overlords. Bad surf. University. Had an 8am class I would probably skip 1 stroke 3 of the time. Missed the day the midterm was given back, so I asked the prof to bring it to the next class. He starts to give me a hard time before looking at the exam and seeing 100% written at the top and saying good job. I go sit down, feeling pretty smart, and go to glance through it before class begins. For the main question I see a couple check marks, then in nothing else for a page and a half before the answer was circled with a check mark. Turns out I had done the problem a wrong way, confused the tay marking the test, and then somehow came to the correct answer at the end, so he just marked it completely correct. In a math test in college a friend made all the process wrong, really wrong, it didn't even make sense. He somehow got the right answer, we don't know how that happened, it wasn't a simple answer either like 8 or something, it was a semi complex answer. He didn't get the points but I remember he went to the teacher to complain and it was hilarious. I once spent a full 2 hour period of a 9th grade class copying the question slowly onto another sheet of paper. It was a reading retention quiz or something. I guess she was only looking to see if you'd written anything, because I got full marks. The moral is, 
Teachers are overworked and underpaid and children's educations pay the price. I once had a high school teacher ask me to grade some of her small work assignments. She told me to give it a check, a check plus, or a check minus based off how many lines a student used to write on each question, not at all the content. In 5th grade I was really excited to be assigned our first report for homework. Something about having to do research and write up a few pages on a topic made me feel like I was finally entering big kid school. Anyways we had the weekend to do it and my topic was tornadoes. They were randomly assigned but I was pretty stoked to get a cool one. I spent all weekend doing research and writing up this 4-5 page paper on tornadoes with a picture or two thrown in. But I was really proud of it. I got a D because my teacher assumed my parents had done it for me and wouldn't discuss the matter. It was not up for a debate in any way. And I've never been so crushed. Really killed whatever love I had to learn that year. I still did well in school. But my enthusiasm about learning and doing research on my own never was the same after that. Had an essay that was explicitly due Tuesday in 6th grade. I have no clue why it didn't click that it was due, not due and only realized when my friend asked me about the essay on the bus. I told my teacher that I'd forgotten to print it out, ran home after the bus, typed it out in 15-30 minutes and got a 97. This started my habit of intense procrastination, sigh. If tomorrow ain't the due date, today ain't the due date. Pick a choice book. Had to do a project on it for honors English class. Didn't read it. Mildly researched the book. Shat out a pretty looking powerpoint. Presented Fancy Bull's book report in front of class and teacher. Got A. I had a similar situation in my AP literature and composition class senior year of high school. We had a book report for a book of our choosing 7 pages long that we were informed about at the beginning of the semester. I, of course, waited until the day before it was due to basically paraphrase 7 pages of summary and analysis of my book from Spark Notes. I made a 93. I was in an upper level political science class that had essay tests. The professor asked us questions and wanted us to explain the answers. Not bad. I filled 5 stroke 8 pages in a blue book and turned in my exam. Positive I had aced it. I received a 63% and when I asked the professor why, he said that although all my answers were correct, other people had filled 8 stroke 8 pages and he had to grade all the tests relative to each other. Me and another guy I didn't know too well got assigned a joint presentation on a topic I can't quite remember. I think something to do with tourism and the outdoor industry. We did very little prep work after being assigned the task. Probably 80% of the PowerPoint was made in the hour right before the seminar. We rushed together about 10 slides with info copied from Wikipedia. Decided which slides we would each talk through and left it at that. The presentation went pretty much flawlessly. We somehow managed to confidently blag our way through each slide as if we knew the topic by heart. When one of us would falter the other would jump in with some more bulls to cover. Come the Q&A at the end we totally pulled it out of our ass. To the point where the lecturer praised us for being so well prepared. I guess confidence is key. In the end we got the equivalent of a B+. Definitely did not deserve that grade. You have been visited by the inspector doggo. Comment your confession. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.